Nossa! Nossa! Not at all, right? Not at all. Is that tight? No. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. It's not any tight. All right. All right? We we all we hear about honest reviews. Honest we reviews. Are, we gonna give the people exactly honest reviews. So don't forget to subscribe, yes. right, for more honest reviews. So mm -hmm. side by side, yes, I am going to say, mm -hmm. welcome back again, rum lovers. It's me, Chami here, ready set rum. And my partner in crime tonight is. Emmanuel, the one and only. All right. Trying to versatile the palette. Exactly. So, Emmanuel has now, you know, more, he, he's more want to become more the sophisticated, you know, sippers of rum, not just the strong rum god, right? Yeah. So, tonight, we're going for another one. So, mm. one of the first videos we did, like, top first 10 or so, we did a comparison between a couple of the 12 year olds, right? right? At that point in time, we had the El Dorado. We had Appleton and we had Angus too. Mm. So tonight, sadly, we don't have the El Arado in the mix, but we do have Appleton's new 15 year old rum and Angus Tura 15 year old, which is called a 1787. All right, so we just did the video for the 15 year old. So mm -hmm. you can check out that one. We went into all the details on the packaging, beautiful packaging. We got the box, we got a little certificate down the bottom there, and this bottle pretty nice cool cap all right so that's just a quick synopsis on the Appleton 15 since we already did it mm. check the link up above <laughs> for the full video we can get all the details right but we have not done the Angostura 15 year old so 15 year old Angostura uh, this is the bottle presentation right here pretty nice says the minimum age statement in the front has a little bit of background on the back on the back um, it's a screw cap which not really a fan of for a premium drink you know you was looking for some more fancy i'm looking for a cork you know it does yeah. have the butterfly on the top and on the bottom that's an angus through a specialty mm -hmm. you know you drink until you see the butterfly right if you see it flying then you know you drank a little bit too much yeah all right so that's angus through right there 15 year minimum on the back it says from the house of angus through in trinidad to you eight seventeen eighty seven expertly blended from rums aged 15 years of our, from our warehouse with sweet bouquet of banana, dried fruit, oak, and the top notes of apples with super premium rum with surely taste, sorry, surely teas, the discerning palette, product of Trinidad today. All right, so this is Angus Tura, super, super premium rum mm -hmm. aged 15 years, all right? so. One of the differences is that this, while both of them are minimum age or 15 years, in fact, this just says 15 years, so it might just be 15 year only. Right. Like no higher, no lower, or it might just be, you know, a small range, 15, 16, something like that. Right. Yeah. Because I don't know how you're going to have a constant supply of just 15, 15 years. years. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, and also to get the same palette at the same time. All the time it's hard to do that with just one year of rum. Mm -hmm. All right, so 15 year from Trinidad, this is a 40% EVV, right? 40% alcohol. This is 43% alcohol, mm -hmm. right? So the elder, the Angus, man, maybe I had too much to drink already. <laughs> the Appleton Estate has a little bit more alcohol content, right? And sometimes that's all you need to win the race, just a little more, mm, you know, in there. But also comes in this beautiful box mm -hmm. right here very sturdy so this is just like a cardboard box you can break it down fold it up this cannot be folded right this yeah. is solid the cover here is solid it's like a plastic insert to keep the bottle still right um very honestly it's premium it's very the packaging on this why is the bottle on the on the Appleton estate mm -hmm. is nicer than the Angostura hands down. The box. The box packaging that it comes in, this is solid. This yeah. cannot be broken down at all. Um, very, very nice on there, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is it right here. And on the back of this, it gives the taste and notes. It gives the color, it gives the nose, it gives the taste, it gives the finish. And it does have a little spiel about Angostura Super Premium 15 year blend. 
1787 creates sails of the mill rotated in tandem with the huge rollers turning and crushing lush bright sugarcane stalks. Loud cheers greeted the first trickles of sweet golden green juice flowing into the copper. A time to celebrate on the sugar estate. From the rich bounty will come not just gold, golden crystals of sugar, but that fascinating new spirit, rum, is still from the secondary product molasses. Angostura 1787 is a tribute to times past when the small world of Trinidad was brave and new and through life was hard. It was pioneers. It was filled with promise. Hmm. Angostura 1787 premium 15 year old. All right. So, too much. Yeah, a lot of spiel right there. Yeah, that, you know, that's a lot like of, somebody showboat into it. Yeah, yeah. Like, a lot of you know, marketing telling you about... So, the reason why it's called 1787 is because the number page tribute to the first sugar cane mill. And that's what it's talking about right here. Right? Mm -hmm. I did my very best to give you a, theatr uh, a theatrical <laughs> reading, right, of the Angus through 1787. Yeah, uh, I would... Uh... Like, you know something? Uh -huh. We know about this rum. Right. We've bought it. Yes. We've drank it. Right. You know, I've never read the back of the box. Never read the back. You know, what? These people put in the effort, right? You and know. For those who have not bought it as yet, I am just trying to, you know, let you all know exactly. what it is. So, um, pricing. We get the pricing on the end because, you know. I want to get to the tasting yeah and get a taste comparison before i do a price comparison right so i consider this mm -hmm. like these two rums mm -hmm. i consider them to be sort of uh i mean this might be a stretch mm -hmm. but it's two heavy hitters in the right. rum industry in the caribbean mm -hmm. um it is of course two of the most well-known um distilleries in the caribbean right. appleton and angostura mm -hmm. um i think this would be a really good comparison right because it's two 15 years yeah they're really good right um we just did the review on this one um i don't even know how much butters of this we went through yeah um so i'm excited for this one That's all. all right so angostura 15 year known as 1787. I don't know if you can get this in the US. Because right. the only place we get this is duty free. In Trinidad. In Trinidad. Right. So I'm not sure if you get this in the US. I'm sure you get it in Europe. I'm not sure what the selling price is in Europe. In America, the prices for Angostura are a bit high. So Angostura 12 year is about 70 bucks to 75 bucks. Mm -hmm. So I would assume the 15 year will be like 85, 90 or 95 or 90, 95, something like that. We'll start with the Angostura rum. On the nose, it says sweet bouquet of banana, dried fruits, oak with top notes of apples. Mm -hmm. Let me say I'm getting a lot of vanilla, which they didn't mention. I'm getting the apples, mm -hmm. but for some reason, it's like an artificial apple. I'm gonna weird um, smell there. For some reason, I'm kind of getting a little kind of woodiness mm -hmm. on yeah. the back. Definitely. And that is something that I've never. You see, when you don't pay attention to things, mm -hmm. we just open and drink. The banana, the banana note is pretty yeah. strong as well. So I'm getting banana, apple, and I'm getting the woody. I'm getting banana, I'm getting some woodiness. oak and vanilla all right so that's on the nose yeah let's get into the taste tasting what i'm smelling sweet molasses vanilla bitter toffee note on the end toffee or coffee on the end what do you get i'm getting the hint of the woodiness in it mm -hmm. um a little warm on the chest afterwards yeah I'm getting the um, like a, the coffee in the back. Mm -hmm. 
I am getting that. So even though I'm doing the same wrong, I kind of like clear my palette. Also, I feel like when I clear my palette, I get more I'm notes on the second yeah. one. So, I yeah, know I just got a kind of weird kind of something in between. Mm. So I'm, I'm getting a, a bit of a tannic sweet. Yeah. Wood kind of thing. Like it's not it's not distinct to me. It honestly, I feel like it's distinctly Angostura, mm. but it's not. I'm not sure what that note is. Mm -hmm. You know. So on their tasting, it says balanced medium palette, hints of dried prunes, sweet round oak notes, and ent entwined with toffee nuances. So maybe it's a dried prunes because I don't really know what dried prunes kind of taste what like. What do you mean? You drink dried prunes all the time, man. <laughs> I at least have eaten a lot of dry prunes back in the day, but the the toffee, I think that toffee nuance is more like that that bitterness that we're getting on the back end. Yeah. Um. Uh, definitely, we, we talked about the oak and the dry prunes. I'm not sure if it's dry prunes I was getting. Like I felt like I was getting something else. Mm -hmm. I was getting more vanilla and some maybe that was the sweetness I was getting from the prunes. Yeah. Try again. Dry, woody, angostura flavor. I'm getting. Yeah. It's. Let's see what. Let's see what that is. It's hard to describe because I, I don't think that was dry prunes. Like I get dry prunes a lot. I don't really think that was dry prunes. It's just kind of bitter sweet kind yeah. of flavor. Yeah. There's a constant bitter sweet throughout this rum. And that flavor is. It's kind of mixed into the woodiness mm -hmm. so that's why it's hard for me to figure out because the only thing i could identify is yes that's wood the other thing i can't identify what it yes. is yes it's just uh but it is kind of bitter yeah it's it's, it's a bitter sweet there's a sweet yeah. and it, there's a bitter sweet taste that lingers through it mm -hmm. finishes long but it is a bitter sweet continuous note that that just sits underneath there yeah all right so that was the angus rural 87 we're gonna clear our palettes no burn mm -mm. smooth going smooth. down a nice warmth on the chest yes. afterward um the flavors that's lingering yeah it's not lingering long where it leave a kind of aftertaste in your mouth to me like it lingered long but it wasn't a bad taste yeah. it wasn't like you know yeah kind of right. like hmm. like honestly it wasn't a puzzle like what exactly is mm. it that's lingering but it's it's just a play of of of, of, of bitter sweet is there some sweetness and some bitterness yeah. that kind of plays back and forth there and honestly i'm not sure what that is um banana not really like the bananas on the nose but i didn't really get it mm. Maybe somebody from Angostura can yeah, help us. Yeah, exactly. You know, tell, from us, Angostura, tell us exactly tell us what, we tasted. what that note is because I don't I don't see that dried prunes. The sweet yeah. round oak. Is it sweet round oak? Oak does get kind of bittery and there is some sweetness in there. Maybe that's what it is that plays all through there. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's move on to the Appleton Estate 15 year. All right. So already been through a lot of this yeah so check the link up below but we're still gonna go through and do I give you a little bit of nosing a little bit of tasting and let you see what about this nose you it's like actually, this nose more it's actually a little lighter in my opinion mm. I don't know I feel like the Angostura got a bit more woody yeah yeah the Angostura is a it bit more woody hit me with yeah, a lot of wood you see, <laughs> exactly. So you, you smell the other fifteen, right? And the funny enough, right? So we on the tasting, it's not a very woody rum. Yeah. Right. But compared to Appleton Estate, you it seems woody. Yeah. When right. You, when you go back. So that just tells you how, even at a fifteen year, the Appleton Estate is not a very woody rum mm -hmm. at all, right? Because one rum, same fifteen year, we didn't notice that's very woody. Yeah. He said, hey, there were some wood notes. Yeah, slight. Slight wood notes, that was it. But compared to the Appleton Estate, Angostura 1787 is a lot woodier. Yeah. Right? So, 
you know and guys let me know down in the comments if you have tried the 7087 i know people over in europe might have tried it before but i know most people in america unless they went to trinidad they wouldn't have tried the 7087 right uh, and let me know also the price wherever you are because i'm not sure how much the price changes across countries and stuff like that so maybe england has the best price because i did see one time the angus real number one second edition online for like 70 bucks i'm like my gosh europe has the best prices when it comes to rum uh, in america honestly i've seen great prices in new york for angus real but not great prices everywhere else don't yeah. know why that is all right so let's get into the tasting on the appleton estate 15 year rum Again, the same thing that I did before. Um, yeah. It's very, it's light. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the warmth actually is lighter compared to the seventeen eighty seven. I think. Really? Or maybe just because you tried this after the seventeen eighty seven? Because this Could has be. more alcohol. This is forty three percent. Yes, forty percent. Yeah. Three percent. Then I don't know how big of a difference in the rum world. Three percent is. I don't know. Three percent. You you're supposed to feel. <laughs> I mean, but they give you 43 percent not because yeah. they want to give away three more percent of alcohol for you to enjoy it more i feel it i feel right it. so but it has a nice it has a nice balance honestly it's blended well the 15 kind of when i swallow it, a sweetness grew like second by second there's a sweetness growing mm. on my palate so definitely has a a level of complexity there that grows while you're sipping Right, while the the Angostura seventy eighty seven had a a constant, even a constant, it was kind of like like a back and forth mm -hmm. of sweet bitter taste, yeah. right, throughout the, the 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 swallowing and the finish and everything. Mm -hmm. But this had a growing sweet note, and then a lingering slight bitter note in the background. So definitely, I, I don't know. I, I I I'm thinking just on 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 that part, I'm enjoying it more. Right? Yeah. It's funny because, you know, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to stay very unbiased mm -hmm. because I have vocally stated mm -hmm. that I think the 1787 is the best 15-year rum out there. Mm -hmm. Or at least if, if there was top two, right. it's in top two, right? you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm tasting the Appleton now mm -hmm. and I'm like... Hmm. I wonder if opinions are shifted. Mm. Mm. So, because I really personally, I really really like the seventeen eighty seven. It right. is, it is one of the best rums that I've ever drank. Right. And I know there's a lot of people out there that is going to be like, this guy is crazy. <laughs> you know, there's way better rums that you know. There's just people that like what they like, and right. that's fine. For me, I'm just speaking for me. Mm -hmm. I think 1787 is one of the best rums out there. All right, but now you've tried. No, I've tried it. Appleton 15. Mm -hmm. Opinions might be shifted. Might be shifted or shifted. Might be. Shifted. The people want to know. Might be shifted. All right. So, I ain't, I ain't mm -hmm. gonna reveal that just yet. But this is interesting. In. Uh, the difference between the flavors to me it's more complex i'm getting a honestly i'm getting a soft when i swallow i'm getting a quick saltiness to a sweetness that grows when the sweetness ends then there's a bitter note underneath right um there's more complexity here yeah there's more complexity on the appleton 15. i agree so all right no now that I've said that, I want to go back, right? Because I tried mm -hmm. the 1787, I tried the Appleton. You want to go back to the 1787? Because mm -hmm. one thing that happens sometimes is that one rum affects the other one. Mm. And I really want to make sure that... I see the, what you're trying. What if the Angostura affected the Appleton positively, right? In trying the Angostura first. Right, because it, the Appleton somehow is a bit sweeter, which I didn't think. I, I thought that, well, I'm pretty sure I'm no Appleton does not add sugar. Angostura sometimes add sugar, 
So I wasn't sure whether sugar was added to this 15 year, right? Mm -hmm. But the fact that the Appleton Estate still, still tasted sweet to me tells me that the 1787 doesn't have any sugar because if you had a sweet rum, right, then you have a no sugar added rum. Right. The no sugar added rum gets a better finish, right? Like because of that, that, that sugar, the sweetness, the, 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 the extra sugar on your palate basically blocks those those taste buds on your tongue right and doesn't allow you to taste any more sweetness right so that's like you eating a candy and then you having a a, a a soda you know when you have the soda the soda doesn't taste as sweet because all your the candy flavor the candy flavor is yeah. covering your, your palate so funny enough 1787 to appleton appleton still tastes sweet so that tells me 1787 has no sugar right but no move from the 17 from the Appleton, back go to back to 1787, yeah. the Angostura. Gonna see what exactly is the flavor profile there. I'm smelling this, and what I'm smelling is wood, man. There, there is this, you know, it's not just wood, it's... I'm getting wood, but there is a... The, the woody scent is more prominent. It's like a apple, vanilla, nose mm -hmm. that I'm getting. But it's not sweet apples, it's like... So it's just apple flavor, no sugar. Yeah. You know? Alright, let me get into the tasting. Hmm. Stronger apple flavor. Yeah. Um honestly a little bit sweeter. But really? Yeah, I, I for me, I'm getting a little more sweetness on it. But Definitely not as complex as the apple. It's a pleasant flavor. It's a good flavor. Yeah. I can see why we enjoyed it for so so much so long. Right? <laughs> we have bought so many bottles of this thing. Yeah. Uh, but I would say the the appleton, you get a a layering of flavors that opens up. I think the apple, the appleton mm -hmm. did a better job. Mm -hmm at allowing more flavors to be present when right. you're tasting it. The, the 1787 kind of just, it stayed true to what you would expect from an aged rum. Mm -hmm. Like you get that, you, you get the woody taste yeah. and what they describe on their packaging as to what other flavors you would get, right. you get in that. Mm -hmm. I'm not really getting the banana stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not really getting the dried fruit. Mm -hmm. But if they say it's there, fine. So funny enough, I get dried fruit on a lot of other rums. But this is not one of them. So mm. there is a flavor there. It's a very unique flavor. Yeah. It's very unique. Honestly, like you see my bar. I have a ton of rums. I I just I drink rums a lot. Right? I drink mm. a lot of rums. And the flavor there is unique. Can't figure it out. It is not, it's not a typical rum flavor. It's not a typical dried fruit rum yeah. flavor that they described, right? Um, I just drank the El Dorado, the 15, the, the 12, sorry, the 12, the old and the new. And they both had dried fruit flavors, mm -hmm. right? And different dried fruit flavors, but we picked them up. This one, didn't get any prunes, that they, what they're talking about. Didn't really get any dried fruit they're talking yeah. about. Um, but it's a unique, honestly, it's almost like a, a whiskey-ish flavor on it. Mm, There's that, a, and maybe that's the barrels that they use. I wonder if they said what barrels they use on this. So in all the writings, they did not say what, what barrels, barrels was used to age it. So, honestly. It's a secret, man. It could be that they use like whiskey barrels because mm -hmm. I'm getting, honestly, I'm thinking about it now. It's kind of like a whiskey finish, right? So that's what you get on the Angus Tour 7087. You get that long lingering whiskey finish. That's yeah. what it is. And on the Appleton, you get, you don't get that. The finish from the barrel isn't prominent. Yeah. What you get is the flavors of sweet, of slight salt in the beginning. Finish with some bitterness, 
finish it off. You get some fruit in there. No, this you actually get some fruit. Mm. Go back and, to it again. And that's why I was saying like they they're doing a good job with if if they tell you on the packaging this is what you're gonna taste. You taste it and you could be in agreement. Not right. not all rums can do that. Right. Because we've reviewed a lot of rums. Right. And uh, there's a lot of rums that they say, oh, there's hints of this and hints of that and, and you it's get it. blended like this and meticulous. They they articulate it so well. Right. And it's like nothing. Right. And all you taste is nothing. This is one of the first rums that I've actually tried, and what they tell you you're gonna mm -hmm. taste yeah. is what you taste it. All right. And I appre I appreciate when rum companies mm -hmm. do that type of thing because it lets me know. Right. They know what they're talking about. So, honest reviews. Yeah. It's like a, <laughs> it's like a rum for somebody who don't drink rum. I'm telling you, this is where you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. And for a man like me who is So Appleton Estate the, you're referring to? Yes. The Appleton Estate 15 year says exact you get exactly what they say yeah. you get. You get what you buy. Ah, right. You get what you pay for. Oh, okay. And now mm -hmm. 1787. Right. Love it. Right. But there is just this gray area of flavor. Right. You just you don't know what it tastes and what you enjoy. Yeah. Alright. So for me. I must say, the Appleton takes this one. I know Emmanuel is, is, is struggling not to say it. Right? <laughs> Emmanuel is struggling not to uh. say the honest truth. But Appleton takes this one. The 15 mm. year, to me, it's more complex. To me, there's a ascending of flavors. There's, mm -hmm. there's flavor growth throughout the set. Right, that I'm enjoying. Right, I'm enjoying it more than a 15 year. Mind you, I've drunk a lot of 15 year of the yeah. the, the, the 17, 17 87. 87. Yeah. Right, and I enjoyed it. However, Appleton reigns supreme at the 15 year mark. All right, you know, it, it, it's hard for him to swallow, right? All right, Just so. The most mm. this this is going to be mm -hmm. the most controversial statement mm. that I have ever made mm. on Ready Set Rum. Mm. It's a tie. No sir, no sir, no sir. Not at all, right? Not at all. Is that tie? No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. It's not any tie. All right. All right? Okay. We we all we hear about honest reviews. Honest we reviews. Are, we gonna give the people exactly honest reviews. So don't forget to subscribe, yes. right, for more honest reviews. So mm -hmm. side by side, yes, I am going to say, mm -hmm. based on everything that we talked about and everything that we drink, right, side by side, mm -hmm. Appleton mm -hmm. is. Inching in front of the 1787. Mm -hmm. Appleton, you win. All right. You take this. Honest right? review. F com compared mm -hmm. to each other, right. Appleton, you win. Correct. That does not mean mm -hmm. that 1787 is not a good rum. Correct. It is a very good rum. Right. But smooth. We got to give the people the honest right. review. It's smooth, it's woody. It gives me a whiskey finish. Like, I was yeah. struggling really long to figure out what that was, but it's definitely whiskey. It is, oh, what do you call bourbon, sorry. Bourbon barrels. They use a lot of bourbon barrels in this, and I think it has imparted itself so much into the drink mm -hmm. that that is the finish that you get, and it lingers throughout the experience. Right. Right? And the thing about it is, the esters in a rum, the kind of rum you make, the kind of chemical components you make, really absorbs the flavor of the rum, of the of the barrel, a lot more, right? And Appleton was able to keep this in there for 15 years and somehow not allow it. Not allow the flavors of the of the previous cars to get into to get into yeah. the rum. Like we barely tasted wood. 
mm -hmm. right? Which usually means they use spent barrels. Like yeah. spent barrels, like barrels that have been used multiple times to ensure. No, it's there, but it's not. It's there, but it's not there like this. Yeah, yeah. Like this is way more wooden. Yeah. It's way more of that whiskey or bourbonish finish. Like, and typically you use American bourbon casks because bourbon mm. is once is virgin, and then they sell off their casks, right? So they sold off their casks. To Angostura. Angostura kept it in there for 15 years and apparently it got a lot more of that bourbon mm. finish but it's not super woody it's just woody compared to the Appleton, Appleton estate exactly right there's a ton of woody rums like for example four square rums to me are more woody mm. than this Angostura 1787 so if you drink four square yes. this is going to be zero wood for you right and also, if you like bourbons, if you like, you know, that type of drink, you're going to get that on the 1787. There's a lot of people who drink bourbons and want to get to a cheaper market. Mm -hmm. Angostura 1787 is the one for you. However, can't find it in the U.S. Never seen it anywhere. I've been to a lot yeah. of liquor stores You've seen all over Florida. Others. You've been all over New York, all different yeah. places. New looking York, at San stores. Francisco, everywhere. I haven't seen 1787. Only place, Duty Free Trinidad. Right. And Duty Free Trinidad, it's a deal. However, that's not typically where most people get it. Most yeah. people get it. Probably most people in Europe are going to get it. Mm -hmm. um, so, for, you you tell me. Probably like 80 bucks, 90 bucks, something like that for this one. All right. So, 80 bucks, 90 bucks in America, right? Probably. Europe has good, great cheap prices. Yeah. Right? Appleton is 65 bucks. And honestly, it's more complex. Yeah. Imana didn't want to say it, right? He didn't want to say it. He, he struggled. He was like, man, I want to tell a lie before I tell the truth. Well, right? <laughs> like I said, you know, mm. we all about honest reviews here. Honest and the reviews. Honest, honest reviews. You know, Appleton just kind of just kind of knock it out. All right. They park with this one. Yeah. And, you know, when you, when you think about it, like, you don't taste the wood in this until you taste this yeah so for if if you never drank this like be immediately before yeah and you just start sipping this yeah you would think what would these guys talking about exactly yeah but definitely so anyone who drinks whiskey or bourbon who have drink who have drunk the 787 let me know if i'm on the money with that because mm. honestly it took me a long time to, to, to think about it but then I just drank some. What did I just drink? I just drank some sort of Irish whiskey or something. I was yeah. like, man, that is what it is. That is what this reminds me of. There's a whiskey finish in there. Um, you know, so definitely enjoyable. Yeah. Um, must haves. Yeah. Buy both of them. Both of them definitely must haves. Just don't drink them together. Yeah. But honestly, drink them together <laughs> because, like, honestly, I think that we are whiskey guys. Yeah. We are whiskey like guys, this. we are bourbon guys. No. So that's why we're not gonna tend to the Angus Tura before mm -hmm. the Appleton. Yeah. Right? But people who and honest funny enough, so Appleton does not give you a traditional rum taste. Mm -hmm. Right? Um traditional rums are honestly more on the lines of Angus Tura, not the fifth, not this one, but right. Angus Tura rums. Also, people would say four square, people would say monkey, right? You know, those are like traditional rums, right? Yeah. Like, they just have all like even like because, and I, I call them traditional rums just because monkey and those rums would be would remind you of other rums in Latin America, so that, that's where the Latin America and the English rums pretty uh similar, mm -hmm. right? Um, those rums right they are traditional however appleton is not traditional appleton flavor profile appleton mm. taste does not remind you of a monkey it doesn't remind you of a yeah, latin course. american rum yeah right they're very unique and honestly the 15 year angus story 1787 is unique yeah. because it doesn't give you that traditional rum flavor mm -hmm. it gives you more of that other category yeah. so very good rums, very delicious rums. Yeah. Appleton Estate wins it. All right, we're gonna do Eldorado next. Do you wanna do Eldorado versus 1787 or Eldorado 
versus Aftal Estate? I think both and then all three because again <laughs> How many videos are you going to do with no, these well, jumps? Well, what I'm saying is mm -hmm. at some point mm -hmm. you got to have all the 315s yeah. comparing against each other all right. you know, because you never know yeah. you might taste the 15 yeah. and then go taste this and be like wait a minute yeah. you know so, what I mean? Sadly, I finished my bottle of 15 year old El Dorado, had my last sip, poured into my infinity bottle, so I didn't have a finished review. So mm. maybe a couple months from now, yeah, you know, I'll do it. I'll always have the Appleton 15, I'll always have the Amstrad 1787. Yeah. So definitely another review is coming. Yeah. Good job, right. Appleton. Good job. Good job. Good job, and Appleton. You know, Angastura, you're doing it too. But yeah. Just on this one. Alright. So Ready, set, wrong. Take you around the world. Two rounds at a time. Cheers. Cheers.